Hi everyone, I'm Rose Murray, and today I'm going to be walking you through painting this ceramic duck. Um, he's really a very simple piece to paint, so what I really would like to stress and go over with you is the dry brushing. A lot of people have a lot of trouble with dry brushing, so when we get to that, I will take my time and walk you through that step by step. So, um, and I want to thank Sarah for asking me to do this class and I hope you all have picked up your kits which is this and you should have a little bit of directions in there. I gave you a bow and a flower to put on his neck after. Everyone has different colored ribbons um, and you have two brushes. We should be able to do it all with the two brushes and um, unless you have some others and you have a little smaller brush, if you wanted to get a little closer with a smaller brush, I can handle it with the big brush. But, all right. So we're going to start with the larger bottle that I gave you, which is this one. I have mine in a big bottle, so I put it out in my palette. But you need a palette. Now I have actually have a palette, but you can use a piece of foil. Um, you can use a plate, a paper plate, it'll be fine. And we're going to base coat the entire duck. You don't have to do his beak and his feet. If a little gets on there, it's okay. But we're going to base coat the entire duck in the mustard color. Now, I have this duck here because I gave out an assortment of these two ducks. And people may think that this one is bigger. It's not. They're the same ducks. There's actually three in a set. And they just are in different positions. He's squatting down. This one's leaning up. And the other one is standing, which I didn't even use. Um, so we're going to paint this entire duck in the mustard color. So you don't need to put your brush in water to start. Just pick up paint. Now because you have a big area to do, you can put a lot of paint in your brush. You just have to make sure that you smooth it out before it dries because if it, you put it on and you work slowly and ridges form and you don't let them uh, smooth, you don't smooth them out before you dip for more paint, those ridges will stay. And then when you dry brush, the ridges will become part of the detail and your dry brushing will accent those ridges even more. Don't think it would be that much of a problem on the duck, but you should really learn the right way to do it. So, uh, so we'll start base coating him. And you see how much paint I have on that? Like that's a lot of paint. So I'm just going to spread it out. Now the whole idea here is not to get, have any white spots showing when you're finished. So I will do the bend. And over here, you don't really have to worry that much. If you get a little bit on his feet, it's okay because the orange will cover it. It's just the idea to keep it smooth. If you can see through your color, it's okay. This color looks like it's covering pretty well because there's going to be two other colors going over the top of it. So all you have to do is make sure there's no white spots. Okay? So continue base coating nice and smooth. You have that nice big brush, which does a nice job of putting the paint on. And I'll go over with you how do you clean your brushes also. That's very important. You want them to last a long time, you have to take care of them. So I'm working my way around the bottom area first so that I can hold on to him by his head. And when I'm done, I'll twist him in all different directions because sometimes when you turn him upside down, you see spots that you missed. Now the bottom, you could paint whatever color you want on the bottom. I'm going to paint the mustard color up to the feet, and then the, the bottom of the feet I'll paint in the orange. So I'll just add lib this along the way here. And you don't have to paint inside, but if you're going to put him outside, it's a good idea to put a sealer up on the inside. And you can buy liquid sealers in Michaels. Uh, Amazon also has them. They're called paint-on sealers or liquid sealers. And just make sure it says that you can use them for acrylics. We used to actually tell people years ago, even Thompson's water seal would work up on the inside. And that's because you're sealing the outside and you don't want the outs inside to be porous because the more moisture it absorbs on the inside puts pressure on your paint on the outside and they make a chip or peel. Uh, the acrylics last pretty long on the outside, depends on where you have it. I've heard some people say that they've had it peel in time. So if it's not in direct sunlight, it probably would last a lot longer. I have pieces outside that have been out there over 10 years and I haven't had any issues with any of the paint. So you should be okay. And then it's in the sun too, so. All right, so you can see now this one well of paint, one well that I filled to the top. You should have plenty of paint in that bottle that I gave you. 
it's practically doing the whole duck if you spread it out and put it on properly. I'll probably need to put a little bit more in there, but you'll have plenty of paint. You can hold on to it for another time when we do a class if there's a color I don't give you and you'll have a little extra then. There's not many colors on this duck. He just really has like maybe four colors on him. color in my palette. Okay. Okay, I make sure that I smooth out all my brush strokes before I dip for more paint. Just double check it, go around, make sure anything that's wet is smooth. When I do these YouTube videos, I always feel it's good for you to see me paint, not for me just to teach you how to paint. Actions speak louder than words. But I also gave you on the directions, I gave you my email. So if you have any issues, feel free, email me. I also would love to see your finished pieces if you want to send me a picture. So now I have to paint his head. I'm going to go on the bottom. I'm going to stick my finger inside there. And see over here, I'm going up onto the beak a little bit because if you stay too far back, you might have a white line between uh, the mustard color and the orange color. So it's always good to overlap one over the other. So I choose to overlap the orange over the mustard color. And you see, I didn't even use half of that that I just put out. So the paint goes very, very far. And you have plenty of paint in that bottle. I think that's a one ounce bottle that I gave you there. So you'll be good. Now, it, I would turn them upside down and check them out. Like I said, on this guy, it's not really going to matter so much. I see some spots I missed that are white uh, because you're gonna be putting two other colors over him. But I'll just double check it and make sure I don't have any white spots. And if later on you find you have a white spot, you can always go back and touch it up. Okay. So I have the mustard color on him. Now, as far as washing your brushes, if I'm painting and I'm not going to get up and wash it in the sink right away, I swish it in the water. And never bang your brushes down. Always work it in the shape of the brush. So this is a flat brush, so I'm working it back and forth. And I would just lay it here. I don't leave them laying in the water because the glues can loosen that are in the ferrule. This is the ferrule, the middle of the brush. So I leave them like this until I can go to the sink. But once you go to the sink, put soap in that brush, grab a hold of the tips of the hairs of the brush and push in and wiggle. That helps you to get the paint out of where the ferrule meets the hairs of the brush. You wiggle it back and forth, do it a couple of times, pull it out, wiggle it, and that helps you prevent getting too much of an accumulation of paint up here. And that's how your brush starts losing the, uh, the flexibility that it has, is when the paint starts getting very heavy in this area. Okay. And I said, have some paper towels handy. I have a couple because when you dry brush, that's what you need. You need paper towels. So this one I'm just using to dry my hands. Okay. So normally I would say let the piece dry a little bit, but... Since I'm doing the video, I'm just going to move on. But if you want, you can let it dry. Now, I gave you a yellow in that little strip of paint. There's a yellow, and you're not going to need much. So you can work right out of that little strip. Now, dry brushing. This is where people need instructions. You are working with a dry brush. Dry brushing is exactly what it says. It's a dry brush all the way through to the end. Now, when I only have one dry brush, I work for my lightest color, uh, my dark I work, usually work from my lightest color to my darkest color. But on the duck, I'm going to work the opposite because they're both light colors, the white and the yellow that we're going to be using. So you don't put a lot of paint in the brush. You tip the brush and just do a little bit of paint. Now, don't bang it because that's going to spread the hairs open. Work it back and forth and work the color evenly into all the hairs of the brush. But there's not a lot. It's just worked evenly into it. Now you're going to go across the grain. I'll do it on the back so you could see it. Oh, yeah, I, I can see a spot right on the top that I missed with white. I did it with my finger. It's all done. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start out with the yellow because I don't like to go directly to the white. 
All right, I like to go to the yellow and have a little bit of contrast with the yellow and the white, okay? So against the grain. So if your grain is going up and down, which is tar vertical, okay, you're going to go, no, if it, okay, I don't really know. <laughs> so, so horizontal is across, vertical is up and down. So if your lines, your details going up and down, you're going to go across, okay? So very, very gently, with a very, very, very light hand, go across the grain. And if you went straight to the white, you would see your mistakes much faster. So with the yellow, it's closer to the mustard and you could get the feel of how dry brushing goes on. So if you see, I'm using one side of the brush. Now I'm gonna twist the brush around because the other side of the brush has paint in it also. And don't go all over the piece, like take a little section a two, three inch little section and work it until you like the way it looks. I'm going back and forth both ways. Now I know there's not a lot of paint in the brush. I will press a little harder. I start out with a very, very, very light hand. Um, a gentleman who taught at my store years ago told me he should be able to come by when you first start out and pull the brush right out of your hand so you're not holding it tight. You're holding it very loosely to start. So if you have too much paint in the brush, you're not gonna get a big blob. And with you, if you have too much paint and you make a blob, you just go back with the mustard, put it on, and let it dry again. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. It's very light, it's very light, it's just the yellow. I'm gonna be doing that first. I know the direction said to do the, must, uh, the, the orange next, but I'd, I'd rather go to the dry brushing. And then we'll go back to the, uh, the orange color. So again, across the grain, both sides of the brush, and when I feel I have nothing left in the brush, and you can see, I dip twice into paint, and I could do the whole back of the duck. Now, dry brushing is accumulated in a couple of coats. It's not something, and that's a mistake that a lot of people make. They want to see the finished product with the first application of the paint, and that's not going to happen. You need to build up your dry brushing. Your dry brushing is built up over two, three, four coats, uh, five coats. You know, you just keep doing it and doing it. So again, a little bit of paint, and don't just do this. I stop, I hold the towel, and I work the hairs of the brush with the paint evenly distributed, okay? And if you have new, these are new brushes that I just gave you, and they will lose hairs in the beginning. So I will move forward now. I will not go back over what I did, because if your paint is wet and you keep dry brushing right over, it can lift the base coat. So I try to let it dry. Do the whole piece at least once with a light hand, again, against the grain. Up here is, detail is, going vertical, so we're gonna go horizontal. I have to think about that one. Twist my brush around, blend it together. Let me get that here. I know with the sunlight, it's very hard to see. I don't know if you could see what I'm doing. It's very difficult to see, but you should be able to see it as you're doing it. I went under my skylight because I figured the lighting was better, but since these colors are very, very light, it's hard to really see what I'm doing. But you can watch. Now that I know I don't have a lot of paint in the brush, I'm pressing a lot harder. And always against the grain. Grain's going this way, I go the opposite way. So what you're doing is if your grain is going this way, you're going the opposite way so that you don't get it in the crevices. Like I said, the yellow doesn't really show that much but I just want you to get the feel of how to dry brush with the yellow first. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna pick up a little white in the brush with the yellow and gradually make your color lighter. So you pick up a little bit of yellow. Oh, I didn't put the white out yet. I guess I should do that, huh? Okay. So what I do here is never wash your brush in between colors while you're painting. The end of the day, when you've finished painting, you must wash your brush. I have had people come back a week later and tell me, oh, you said not to wash the brush. Well, that doesn't mean at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you must wash your brush or you won't have any brush left. Of it. The paint, as fast as the paint dries on your piece, it dries in the hairs of the brush. You're not washing it in between dry brushing colors because your paint is keeping it moist, but once you're finished, you must wash it. And again, the same thing, grab the hairs, wiggle it, although we're, if you, if you Dry brushing properly, you are not getting the paint into the bottom half of the brush, okay? So now I'm gonna pick up a dot of the yellow and I'm gonna dip into my white. Let me do 
can see it here, and put a little white in the brush also, and blend the two together just to give me a lighter yellow. So I'm not going directly from the yellow to the white, I'm making a lighter yellow in between. And you could see it on my paper towel. This one down here is the one that I just made. And I'll go over everything that I just did, and now you really can see the difference. Uh, see that? See where it's wet there? That's the mixture that I just made. And I'm gonna go over the entire duck with this color. The more coats of dry brushing you do, the more detail you see, the more depth it gives to your piece. Now when I know that I don't have too much paint in the brush, I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with the flat. I always work with the flat side of the brush. I don't work point in because that would put your color in the crevices. Flat side of the brush. Now I'm going slow so you can see it, but once you get used to it, you can go a little faster. But just keep working the area that you did. Don't just put it on once and move. I would stay here, blend it, And when you have nothing in the brush, you actually can go the same direction as the crevices because you really won't get anything in the crevices. That I just do just to blend the colors properly. Okay, so again, that one brush load did almost the whole duck, but I'm gonna do it a second time. Take a little bit of yellow, take a little bit of white, blend them together. And each coat that I do, oh, these brushes really shed, each coat that I do it gets a little bit lighter. And again, I don't know if you could really see it, but it gets a little bit lighter with each coat that you do. Now the last coat that I do, I'm gonna pick up white. And I'm, I'm gonna try not to do the entire duck. I'm gonna to try to tip mostly at the bottom of his feathers, just to give him some character spots and then do more around the tail. And as you can see, the tail on this one has a little bit more white on the tail. And I try to just tip some of the edges of the feathers and not do it as much as I did with the, the mixture and the original yellow. But he's your duck. And I'm sure just like us, we come in all different colors, ducks come in all different colors. So you can do as much dry brushing of the white, the yellow as you want. And you can stop whenever you feel that you like him the way he looks. All right, I, this was done a very long time ago and I might have base coated him in a different color which they discontinue colors on me every time I get used to them. So it might not look exactly the same but he does have a mustard color underneath. See, that's my mustard colors. A, maybe a little bit different than what you started with. Not, not that much different, though. No. It's very light hand when you start out. Very, very, very light hand. So what I do when I start out now with just the white is I'll go to the areas I want more white, so this way I can get rid of some of the paint that's in the brush. So I'm gonna do more white at the tip of his tail. So I'm gonna go up, and then I'm gonna go down with it. So it's not just a line. And you can see that, I have a lot more white there. And then you give him character spots. You may want to do his chest area. A lot of animals are, are, are whiter in the chest. I know dogs, cats, they always have whiter chests. So you can do that with him too, but it's a little harder to dry brush on a flat surface. So I start out by putting a little bit onto his feathers. And I'm not doing it as, as much as I did the yellow. It doesn't have to be all over. Okay, and then when I start running out of the paint in the brush and there's less in the brush, you can pounce. And also, when you do dry brushing on a flat surface, you don't go back and forth as much. You can use the side of your brush to kind of pounce it on. Turn it around, pounce in there. 
Now to blend it, because I don't like the way it looks, I'll pull it with the side of the brush to the right and the left. And if you don't like the way that comes out, you could pick up the mustard and dry brush it on. You could pick up the yellow and dry brush it on. You could just keep playing with your colors until you're happy with the way it looks. And never wash your brush between colors. Use the next color that you're going to use. Even when I go from uh, dark, light to dark, I use the next color to wash out the previous color out of my brush. We just put, like say I want it to go back um, to mustard now, I put a little bit of the mustard in the brush, wipe it out a little bit more until I get the color that I want. So you're using the previous color to clean out, um, you're using the next color to clean out the previous color out of your brush. I think you have the idea now, and like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me as far as the dry brushing is concerned. And, and I'm going to stop now, and I'm not going to wash the brush yet because I want to go back and dry brush the beaks and the feet with a little bit of yellow on the tip. I don't know if you can see that on the tip of the duck and on the tip of his feet, there's a little bit of yellow. So I'm just going to put that down, and I'm going to go back and paint. Make sure the brush is dry, your big brush that you first started out with. And we're going to put the orange on the beak and the feet. Okay, so now you, you have a big brush and a very little area to paint. So just tip it. You don't want a lot of paint. And don't start out where it's close to his face. Start out at the edge and work your way in. And then use the corner of your brush to edge it. See how I did that? I used the corner of my brush. And that went on very well with the big brush. So just a little bit in the brush. Start out away from the edge until you get the feel of how much paint you have in the brush. And then turn the brush on its side. You can see this? And use the edge of the brush, like the right or left corner. I'm using the left corner because I'm working in this way. To get close to the duck body. You do need a little bit of paint on the brush when you're doing that, though. It shouldn't be that dry. Otherwise, it doesn't flow in there. Okay, I was able to do that. It went on pretty well. So now I'm going to do the feet the same way. I'm going to start on the bottom. Get rid of my excess paint. And I'll work my way in and use the corner, the corner of the brush. Because it's not a small brush, unless you have a small brush. Use the corner of the brush. To do your edging. And if you go out of the lines, you can always go back with the mustard color and touch up. So I got that one on perfectly. That went on very well. I'll do the other side. I always start on the bottom because I want it to dry so I could stand them up. So I don't want to do that last. So if you go while I'm doing the top part, that's drying. So I have that on there. I have his feet and his beak done. I'm going to put that in the water again, swish it around. Don't bang it down, swish it around, blot it out, and just lay it across the top of the bowl until you get a chance to wash it. Now, these are a little bit wet, so um, if I was you, I would let it dry a little bit. You can always pause the video, but for me, I just want to keep going so you can see what I'm doing. So now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the yellow and I'm going to dry brush it in from the tip, in toward the face because I don't want to go this way because then you'll have a line in the middle of the beak. So we want to take the edge of the beak and feather it in and then go the opposite way, go down. I 
And again, if you don't like the way it's going on, you could go back with the orange and put some more of the orange in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the feet. Just dry brush a little bit on the edge of the feet. Now, on the feet, I'm not necessarily going straight up because I don't wanna get it all over the body. So I am flipping down and that puts a little bit of the orange, uh, the yellow onto the tip of the feet, okay? Now, another thing, like I told you to have um, a black magic marker ready. And you really need for the piece to dry before you use the marker. But the marker really works great. Now I have two different size markers here. I have the ultra fine, which you can do it all with the ultra fine, but mine is running out of ink. And that makes a very nice outline. As you see, his, his eye is outlined. Um, but I have the little bit bigger one here, and I'm just gonna do a circle. Now, I don't like when the eye is just a circle in the middle of the area, because what happens is it makes them look scared to death. So I always like the arch to touch the pupil, okay? So I did the black. I don't know if I could do the outline with this one. Yeah, it works out. It's a little thick. That's why the ultra fine point marker is much better. And that would do lashes for you better also. Okay, let's see if I can use it at all. If it's working. Yeah, it's pretty much out of ink. I have to get myself a new one. But you can just do three or four little lashes. I started to do them at the top. See, it's starting to fade out. And then you also, another thing you can do is with the um, back end, well, the back end of that brush, or the, the tip of the marker, you can pick up a dot of white if you don't have a little brush. And you can put a little highlight, like at, at like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, on, on the eye of the duck, the duck of the eye, yeah, the eye of the duck. And that is the reflection of light that you see on everyone's eyes. If you look at everyone's eyes, you'll see a reflection of light. And that's what you do. Okay? So that's the duck. And I gave you a ribbon. And I tie the ribbon around his neck and make a bow and a flower that you can glue on there. And like I said, you should seal him if you're going to put him outside. And I wouldn't put him outside right away. I'd let him dry really well. And you have also spray. There's a Krylon spray. Years ago, the companies made spray, um, Mako, Duncan. Mako doesn't make it anymore, but Duncan does. So um, you can use whatever kind of sealer you'd like, but you know you can always go into Michael's or any craft store. Hobby Lobby, I'm sure, carries it. I know Michael's and Amazon carry it. Amazon's a lot more expensive than Michael's for the sealers. So if you can get to go into Michael's, that's fine. So seal them, put them out in your garden, enjoy him. And I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to uh, get these kits from the library and attending my classes and supporting ceramics. And I hope to see you again real soon. So thank you all very much.